First, I want to thank all of you for being here and caring so much. What I want to do today is be very brief, probably way too brief in terms of what we're confronted with. I'm going to offer an overview. It's not a 30,000 foot overview. It's an integrated pragmatic overview. The presentation I'm about to give is probably very different from all the others. I'm very interested in basic issues, foundational issues. It's not about a piece of geography or housing. I'm primarily interested in the relationship between people and nature. And can we work out that relationship that works for everybody? Uh, thank you. Uh, at the bottom of each of my slides is a big, broad question. And I'm not going to answer those. I'm just going to pose them. Everyone is welcome to my slideshow if you want to take it and think about it later. And I want to end with some recommendations and a conclusion. So you always begin by what are we trying to accomplish here, which is what this slide is. It's the goal. The Teton County goal, very hard won through a lot of public dialogue in a long time. So there's no doubt about this. This is in a common interest. Uh, a lot of the public land in the region, too, is, has been created and maintained in the common interest over many, many generations of humans. So you might ask, because we all have a window on the world, what's my window on the world? I've been asked that. That's why I put this slide in. And I can't be complete, but just give you a hint. Uh, so I kind of lived here about 50 years, worked here about 54 years or so. Uh, and I like to think that actually gives me a kind of view of the long-term functional, fundamental, social, environmental things going on. It's a view that's not shared by many people. There's no way in the world I can tell you what Jackson was like 50 years ago, especially for people who have been here a year or two or three or four. Thank you. Uh, I did the first grizzly bear studies in Teton County in the 70s and a lot of other work. Uh, I've had the good fortune of uh, being a university educator and I've had students from over 30 countries and worked in 15 countries and so forth. So my window on the world may be different than yours. There's a lot of things going on out there that affect us indirectly that we have not yet talked about. My education is largely about transformative education. It's just not giving people knowledge. We need to be able to produce students and ourselves who can deal with the more complex world we're living in now and clearly what's coming. And we need to transform ourselves, not just do more of the same. So you see the outline of my talk there. And I ask everybody when they say, what do you think or what do you advise? I say we need to pay closer attention to what's going on and start asking better questions. So the heart of my talk is about context and interconnections. So I have four slides from downtown Jackson to the planet. So a couple mornings ago, I wake up to a lot of loud noise of four before off-road vehicles going by my house. There were 12 of them. So someone in Jackson Hole rented those to whoever the drivers were, made a little money on it probably, good business deal. Yet they produce noise in my neighborhood that's really upsetting to a lot of people, unintended. So to go up Curtis Canyon and run around, harass wildlife and displace it. So there are connections. So we have to think in terms of context and these connections. I'm sure the guy who rented the vehicles didn't want to make noise for people in my neighborhood. He didn't want to harass wildlife, but the fact is that happens. It's all about connections. The exercise we just did here a moment ago would be good to repeat, well, what connections are you making? How do you understand the context? Do we just think in terms of Jackson? 
Teton County, the greater ecosystem, or the planet? These are really fundamental questions. So people like me who are integrative and pragmatic tend to think functionally. And pragmatism is about dealing with the real world, not about fantasy or wishful thinking or all that stuff. If you think about the planet, which we're all connected to, I had a friend recently say, said to me, he's 93, he says, I've been pushed out of the culture, but it's still my planet. So you may not know, but Greenland is melting very rapidly. Yeah, Antarctica is too. The North Atlantic current is changing very rapidly. Australia is now experiencing the collapse of 19 major ecosystems. And I could go on and on and on. All that's happening. And we're not immune from that connection. So the question I have here, we tend to think of the environment, oh, it's just out there, it's nature. But we have an internal environment. How we think, talk, how we relate, our sense of community, all those things. So I start off here with our internal environment and basically ask the question, what is it we experience, feel, or want from the environment? And if you want to clarify your standpoint, you might want to take on that question. What is it you really want here? And many of you spoke to the comments earlier. Uh, this is a basic kind of heartfelt question we're trying to answer. What is it we want here? How do we want to live here? How do we want to live with each other? How do we want to live with external nature? So most people think of external nature as, or the environment as nature. It's out there somewhere. It's up in the park or on the forest. It's not downtown on Cash Creek. You may not notice, uh, again, back to the comment of paying attention, how many fewer birds have you seen this summer and insects? There's data in North America, we've already lost 2.9 billion birds, roughly 30% of the bird population in North America in the last 50 years. I don't know if you're paying attention to those things. Nine out of 10 boreal birds. All those trends are playing out. They're not, they haven't stopped. And they're evident around here if you know what to look for. Again, throughout the planet, 40% of all the insects are gone. And we cannot run the human community and live in an environment if these trends continue. And they're probably not on our radar here in downtown Jackson. So I'm just trying to leave you with the point about uh, how we look at contacts and interconnections. Just locally, immediately? Like we need a traffic light or fire hydrants? Or are we able to look at the larger picture that we're all caught up in and being swept along by? So the basic question here is what is nature? You might try answering that. And what ought to be our relationship or our responsibility to nature? And again, that's another core theme that I heard across all the comments. So the next couple of slides about like, what do we know? What do we know about this place? There's actually a lot of data out there. If you went to the Pentagon and walked around all the halls, you eventually come to a door called net assessment. And that's where all the data goes. And the guy, whoever's behind that door makes sense of all the data. They figure out what it all means. From that, they say we ought to do X. So we're having great difficulty in Jackson Hole with net assessment. We got a lot of data about all kinds of stuff, but there is no place I can go or you can go to see who's putting it all together for meaning at the appropriate contextual and integrated scales. If we had that information, it'd be a lot easier for decision makers to make decisions. At the other end, if we looked at the net assessment of all our activities, it'd be really helpful too. We do not have that. We might want to get it. Uh, well, the point here, being here over 50 years, the baselines are really shifting about what people think and what the environment is and what's acceptable living and all that. So I have a few more slides here. These are just a few of the many data points. So the chair of the Greater Yellowstone Co 
Coordinating Committee, the Wildlife Subcommittee, is basically arguing we are not dealing effectively with the threats currently. Dan Wink, who was superintendent of Yellowstone, has spoken at this conference before. We do not have to accept the slow degradation of the system. We can do something about it. And you may have seen the news article here a few weeks ago. Uh, looks like we're heading for 125 degrees in the next couple of decades. Uh, a couple of cases. These were at the county commission meeting yesterday, actually. This is the driveway over in Wilson. Uh, that really impacts wildlife habitat and the sense of community and all that. And they're building this big driveway and they've already moved three and a half thousand dump truck loads of dirt. You might ask, what's the carbon footprint of that? And there's no permit yet to even build a house. So the big question before us, even though carnivores and ungulates are still here, is no guarantee they're gonna be here in the future, given the context and the trends. And the two big questions, can we keep these? Can we keep the migrations? And there's a lot of effort going into trying to do that. So I'm near the end here, but this brings up the question, what is science? Science helps us to discover the basic rules of reality. And we ought to be paying attention to science in that sense. Education is about giving us the skills to use that knowledge to manage for the good life. So we at the Northern Rockies Conservation Cooperative have been in the upper left there. This is a teacher workshop we did for five years and a curriculum. We could be doing more of that to teach the better science and the better skills. So in closing here, we need to ask ourselves, are we using the better concepts? Do we understand what ecosystems are? Are complex adaptive systems? Do we understand the science? Do we understand our own decision-making process? Do we understand our own value outlook and standpoint? Then how do you think about that? What do you think with if it's not concepts? So these things I'm talking about here, concepts, thinking, talking, and action are the four keys. And we need to look at those and say, what on earth are we doing now? And is there a better way? Would we even recognize the better way? So the conclusion is the goal for Teton County is exceptionally good. But we need to pay attention to the context and all the interconnections much more than we're doing now. And we need to find strategies and tactics that help us better achieve that goal quickly. And the large question is, can we be the groundbreaking success story? From my point of view, the greater Yellowstone ecosystem is the best chance we have in America to create some semblance of sustainability. And the real problems to be addressed are us and our relationship with nature and the kind of problems we see and confront. Thank you.